Okay, this is the um, the example I asked you to do in class regarding the auto cycle. Um, now you've given some initial conditions of the um, the air and cylinder, and you also told the compression ratio of the engine and what the maximum temperature is um, throughout the whole process. And you asked to find the temperature at the end of the compression stroke, the peak pressure, the heat addition, the network, and finally the thermal efficiency. And obviously, stay any assumptions you make. There's a couple of things here. Um, firstly, you, one of the things you need to recognise is that the maximum temperature, where that occurs in the cycle, okay, and that's 0.3 at the end of um, um, combustion, and also where the peak pressure is, and again, that's um, 0.3, which is at the end of combustion. So the best way to start this problem is draw a sketch so you can see what you're, what you're doing and help visualise the problem. <coughs> Then I also um, recommended that you um, draw a, a table for this um, for this problem. So you got points one, two, three, four, the pressures at each point and the temperatures. And you can populate this. You know um, you're given the initial pressure and the initial temperature from the question. You're told um, the temperature point three. You know that goes there because that's where the peak temperature occurs. But you don't know anything else. Okay, so first of all, you were told to find the temperature at the end of the compression stroke. Uh, you can do that by recognising that um, between 1 and 2 is a polytropic process, so you know that temperature and volume are um, related uh, like this. Uh, this is from um, first year thermo. And if you rearrange that, then you get um, T2 is equal to T1 times V1 over V2 as a function of gamma. Now, you don't know anything about the volumes, um, but you do know their ratio. You know that V1 over V2 is a compression ratio, and that's 9.5. So you can plug that in. Gamma, um, I said state any assumptions that you make. So the value of gamma, um, you know, what, what the value you take is up to you, but um, 1.4 is what I've been telling you to take. And that's, that's <laughs> good for a wide range of temperatures, and especially for the air standard cycle. Um, it shouldn't change with temperature in a way. So you plug uh, 9.5 and the initial temperature and 1.4 into this, and you should work out the temperature is 738 Kelvin. Now we're going to work out the pressure at the end of the compression stroke here because we need that pressure for um, uh, to help work out the pressure at um, point 0.3, which is the next part of the question. So going from 2 to 3, um, oh sorry, um, we're working out the pressure at point 0.2. Um, so we know that because we've already worked out the temperature, we can now use this relationship for the ideal gas law. And we know that P1V1 over T1 is a constant, and we now know all the information in here. Again, we don't know what the volumes are, um, but we know their ratio, that's the um, compression ratio, but we now know P1 and T2 and T1. And if you work that out, you work out P2 is um, basically 2.2 megapascals. Or you could do it another way, you could use this relationship. Um, working from the volumes. It doesn't matter. Either way, you'd come up with the same answer. So, so putting those two values into our table there, um, we can proceed to the next part of the question to find the peak pressure at um, P3. Um, so the process here, we can't use, this isn't polytropic, we can't use that process here, uh, the, the relationships here. But we do know all this information. Um, well, we... Um, Again, we don't know what the volumes are, but we know that V2 is the same as V3 because this is an isochoric process. So those two can cancel, and we can get a relationship of P3 in terms of the temperature in P2. Again, if we substitute the values in there, you should end up with a, a pressure of 3.3 um, uh, megapascals. And also um, worked out the temperature at the end of the expansion stroke. Um, I've done this here because you need it for the next part of the question. You need to be able to know the the um, temperature to work out the um, heat that's been rejected from the system. Um, now we go back to our polytropic relationship because um, that's what it is between 3 and 4. So again, we can use, um, right, relate temperature and volume uh, in terms of gamma. And this time, if you remember, so from 1 to 2, we had the... Um, compression ratio so if going from three to four we have the expansion ratio so it's one over this if you um not sure how i got here um it's um um 
look in the notes or look back on the section where we were deriving the temperature ratios as we go around the cycle. Okay, so go back and look at the YouTube videos for that. If you plug the numbers in here, again, 1.4 for gamma, 9.5 for R and T3, we already know. You end up with a new temperature um, for T4, okay? Um, and then just for completeness, you don't actually need this um, for the question, but you can solve it to find out the final um, pressure. Okay, so putting all those values into our table, we now uh, know all the temperatures and all the pressures throughout the cycle. Now, what we also asked is to find was the heat addition per unit mass, okay, so we don't need to know anything about how much air is actually in the cylinder. Um, so assuming an ideal gas, um, we know the change in internal energy is equal to the um, net heat supplied between 2 and 3 minus the work. But because it's isochoric between 2 and 3, no work is done. Therefore, um, the change in uh, um, the heat supplied is equal to change in internal energy, which is CV delta T. And we can get CV from the tables, assuming an air standard um, cycle. So when this is slightly wrong, it should be kilo kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, and if we plug all that, that in, then we end up with um, Q um, between 2 and 3 of 260 kilojoules per Kelvin. Now, the last uh, penultimate um, thing we asked to find the network. Now, um, the network can basically be found because we know that this is a closed cycle. And if we go around here, all the change in internal energy is zero. As we come back to this point, it has to be we're back at the same point. So the network is equal to the net heat supplied. Okay, so that's what they're saying. The change in internal energy is zero. Therefore, Q net is equal to W net. And we're trying to find out W net. So we can find out Q net. We already know, we know that um, the net heat supplied is what goes in minus what goes out. We already know what goes in. We just worked that out on the previous slide. Um, and so if we work out what goes out, which is um, CV delta T between four and one, plug the numbers into this equation, you use the same CV because it's near standard uh, analysis. Um, plug in the temperatures from the table, we end up with 104 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. And then if we subtract that from the 260, we end up with Q net, which is also equal to the network. So it's 155 kilojoules per kilogram. Then finally, for the last part of the question, you asked to find the thermal efficiency. Well, the that's fairly easy to do because the thermal efficiency is the work done, which you just found out divided by the heat in. So if you divide uh, Q net or from the previous slide by QT3, you end up with 59%. And always as a check, you could always check it with um, that function, if, which you remember if we derive through, through the lecture. So you could just put 9.5 into here, just double check that you've got it right, which is always good exam practice.